Hi, welcome to our podcast, Books Don't Review Themselves. I'm Jessica. And I'm Kim. And today we are going to be reviewing Kingdom of Exiles. It's the Beast Charmer series. It's book one by Maxim M. Martineau. Martineau? Martineau? I think. I'm not sure exactly how we say it. It's French. It's fancy. (laughs) But the release date of the book was um, June 25th, so it's a fairly new book. So we decided, I I ended up purchasing it. I'm not sure how you ended up getting it. Library copy. (laughs) So that's what it looks like. And I do judge books by their cover. I honestly do. Yeah. Yeah. I thought this was a cool cover, and then I read the description, I'm like, that sounds good to me as well. Okay. So... Basically, this is a fantasy romance. I read a lot of fantasy. I read some fantasy romance. I read a lot of epic fantasy. Just does not. <laughs> well, and I think, like, I really like Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. And I never viewed that as fantasy, even though it really probably mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess the other thing I noted was I read Harry Potter when I was younger mm-hmm. And now as an adult, when I read fantasy, I want to, like, analyze everything. Where when I was younger, I don't think I did that. So, like, when she's talking about different creatures and that kind of stuff in this book, I'm like, wait a minute. What does that creature look like? Like, I want to see a picture of this creature, you know, and want to know all the details of it. So I struggle a little more with fantasy now as an adult just because it's a little bit more in-depth. Then, You're not a child anymore, and you don't have childlike wonder. <laughs> yeah, well, kind of, and it's Anyways. it's something that where I think maybe if I'm physically reading the book, maybe I take away a little bit more, mm-hmm. but I listen to this book, and I feel like I took away something else listening to the book because it went back and forth between the um, characters. The characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and, Lena and Nock are the yeah. two main characters, so and it goes back and forth. Yeah, in a way, it felt like watching a movie, you know? So, with the person who was reading the book, was it all one person for the book? Or no. they did no. two different people? Yep, they one had, male and one female? Yep, they had one okay. male, one female, um, and then they changed okay. the narrative. See, I would like that better because sometimes when I... I don't listen to audiobooks that often, and one of the many reasons I don't listen to it is I just... I don't enjoy, like, when they do have one author for the whole right. book. If they had that for this, I don't think it would do it justice. No. My other reason is... I can't concentrate. Like, I need to just sit and listen to the book. And I think that's the other thing is with this book, you almost want to read it. Mm -hmm. Like, listening to it was great, and I really enjoyed it. But, it again, it's one of those things there's so many details because it's this whole Mm -hmm. alternate universe and there's separate creatures where... To me, I listen to audiobooks a lot, and I used to listen to them a lot more because I had a long commute to work, so I could listen to three audiobooks, four audiobooks a week. But the books I was listening to was either thriller or things where it's like I didn't have to concentrate, and I feel like with this type type of genre, you do. Like, yeah. you do have to concentrate a little bit more. So that was a little bit more of a challenge mm-hmm. for me with listening to this one. Mm-hmm. I can totally see that. And for me, with fantasy, there are some series that I've read in the past, Robert Jordan being one of them. I, like, stopped because it just, it just got bad. But with this, (laughs) it just got bad. I don't want to go into it. But with this one, um, I I enjoyed it a lot, and I definitely want to read the next book in the series and see where it continues to go. Another thing for me, too, the reason why I do read so many thrillers and mysteries and horror is because a lot of times... Well, I shouldn't say a lot of times. Most of the times, they're not super descriptive when it comes to the environment around them. Whereas, like you were saying, this fantasy one, it's super descriptive. Now, there are times in the past that that, that would have turned me off, and I would have found myself skimming a lot. Right. But with this one, the way that she wrote, it was beautiful, I thought. I Her descriptions, and it just... It flowed so nicely. It was never, I was never bored. I was never no, like, No, and I think the descriptions, the thing that I've noticed when I, like I said, I don't read a whole lot of fantasy, but like I said, I'm a big fan of Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. I felt, and to this day, I do like the first book, mm-hmm. but I, I felt the first book of Harry Potter was not great. It was basic. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. very basic mm-hmm. and kind of laying the foundation. Mm-hmm. And I, Going into this, knowing that this was going to be one of, is it four, I think? Four or I maybe not more? Look, actually. Because I, I see that there are going to be, you know, sequels coming out. I kind of was wondering, like, how are she, is it going to be 
a similar situation where this is kind of going to be the the laying of the groundwork. Yeah. So it's like it if that's the case, this book has to be descriptive because if you're creating an you know an alternate, alternate universe, world. and like you said, I think she did a good she did really well in describing everything, mm-hmm. but in a sense where you weren't like bored. Exactly. You know, and it made sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was fast. I mean, the story progressed very yes. quickly, even though you are getting these gorgeous descriptions. The other thing, too, at the end of the book, there's a bestiary. So you can, there's only a few pictures of the um, of the creatures, but she does describe each of the creatures and then kind of tells you how to charm them. So I don't know, I doubt in your audio book they No, that. they didn't. Yeah. And that's where I did, because I purchased the book um, on my Kindle to read and then, for lack of time, I decided to listen to it. Mm-hmm. So I think I would go back and maybe even sit down and read this one, knowing that I'm going to want to read mm-hmm. the, her next books. Yeah. And, again, with, like, Harry Potter, kind of going back to that, because that's probably one of the most popular books that I can base it off of, mm-hmm. is you can read the fourth book without reading the first book. But it you don't won't, want to. You, yeah, you don't want to. <laughs> There's and, too much story building up to that point yes. that you'll miss things. You'll get the gist of the story, but you will miss the important little pieces of the right, story. Right, right. And with the creatures playing such a big role in this, mm-hmm. um, that's the one thing with the audiobook. It's like you hear about these creatures and kind of the description, but it doesn't stick as well, as I well. think, as when you're reading. Mm-hmm. So, And I think you were drawn to this book because of the... Um, was it Fantastic Beasts? I think it kind yeah, of reminded you of that. Yes, yes, it did significantly. It reminded me of kind of like, this is going to sound terrible, but it reminded me of like a cross of like Fantastic Beasts, mm-hmm. but also it kind of made me think of Shrek. <laughs> okay, how? And the reason it made me think of Shrek <laughs> okay. was because I was thinking of like, um, in the movie, you know, when they're going on this journey mm-hmm. and they're ogres and they want to be, you know, princesses and whatever, and they're going on this journey, it made me think of like the journey was a similar okay. type of journey, but more along the lines of like the Fantastic Beast. So I kept okay. thinking back of um, Lena as like a Princess Fiona mm-hmm. type character. I can see um, that. Yeah. But then also, and this is going to be kind of funny. Um, Knock kind of made me think a little bit about like Christian Grey. <laughs> oh dear God! <laughs> um, it, I okay. think uh, I think it was just kind of his demeanor. Okay, his demeanor, like standoffish. Yes, and mm-hmm. almost like, why did you do that? You know, because mm-hmm. that's kind of the demeanor of like mm-hmm. Christian Grey, and then it turns into like the romance and stuff. Yeah. So it it, I, it I played on it. And as humans, we always want to. Make examples of things. Yeah. This re- categorize, I guess, is the yeah. right thing. This reminds us of this, and that's why when we do reviews, I definitely and you two are constantly talking about. Oh, it reminds me of this and that. Mm-hmm. One thing that I will say is there's a difference between fantasy and um, fantasy romance. My husband will read fantasy and he enjoys it, but fantasy romance is becoming a much bigger thing. And he doesn't enjoy that as much. It's not that he's a prude and doesn't enjoy the sex scenes or anything like that. He just, he wants a different story. I enjoy the fantasy romance. Does he want more of like... He wants more of the adventure and less of the will they or won't they. Yeah. And that was throughout this entire book as will they or won't they. The thing that I was very, very grateful for, and thank you for writing it this way... I was afraid that there was going to be a love triangle between the main character, Lena and Nock, and the bartender that we meet at the beginning of the book, and his name is Des. I have stopped many series throughout the years because of the stupid love triangles. Janet Ivanovich, I loved her books, the Stephanie Plum series, book 13. that, That is one of my favorites with the exploding squirrels, but the love triangle, it just kept going and going, and I'm like, for the... For the love of goodness, pick pick one or the other. And there was another one, the um, Hannah, ooh, I can't think, it was a cozy mystery. It was a food one. But she kept going on, too, between the cop and Norman, who was a dentist. And I'm just like, stop it. So, like I said, I was afraid of this. But as the book progressed, I'm like, thank you. Thank you for not doing that. Yeah. So that made me very happy. And once back. Again, just going back to the romance, um, there are sex scenes in this book. So, if... And I thought they were very vivid. And granted, again, yes. I listened to it. But I think <laughs> reading, 
again, something about romance to me where, like, reading it or listening to it Mm -hmm. is way more pornographic than porn, in my opinion. It's because it's so descriptive. Mm -hmm. And um, listening to it, I'm like, ooh, ooh. (laughs) And then, and, you know, as she wrote it, she just wrote it really well. It wasn't like... And it was natural. It wasn't... Yes, it wasn't... Awkward and weird. And you're like trying to picture in your mind and going like, bodies don't go that way. That or like, that's not how it progresses mm-hmm. or, you know, so I I thought she did a really good job on mm-hmm. the sex scenes, really. Exactly. And the one where Lena, um, she gets to come first and then I'm like, yeah, that's how it should be every <laughs> time. So yay for that. That was wonderful. As Jess was saying, there are tons of characters in here. The main characters besides Lena and Nock are like his band of shadow shadow people. What? Yeah, they're in the they're dead. Cr- they have shore. Cr- cr- yeah, I wasn't cr- sure how to pronounce that. It's C R U O R. Yeah. Cr- 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 <laughs> it, my mouth doesn't go like yeah. that. Yeah. See, and that's the other thing with fantasy that can I can struggle with is because the names aren't like you know they're not normal that we're right so you're not like oh yeah harry Mm -hmm. and then ron it's like knock and Mm -hmm. um you have cost and calum and ozias Ozias, but they call him Oz, Oz, so that's just easier and this fantasy compared to like the robert jordan world or the terry good kind this is easier because those books there are so many different characters and so many different lands and they're like going between like five different lands in one book so this was this was nice. It was there's a couple different lands, but right. it progressed. You went from land to land. So I thought this was an easier read in that regard, which was which was nice. Very nice. Once again, I have all my little I, like I don't want to ever give anything away. So I think some of these notes too where I'm just kind of guessing about the future, I'll put at the bottom so you can read through them if you want. And the one that I guess like I don't know, maybe 3 chapters in yeah, it comes to pass in the next book. So I'm just like, oh, yay. So sometimes that that makes me happy that I know what's going on. But other times, like, I want a book that totally surprises me. Right. That is just, like, insanely weird. And I had no idea where it was going. And actually, one of those books that did that, um, it was John Dies at the End by something Wong. I don't remember that is just a messed up book and it's so weird. And it became a movie too. They made a movie out of it. So if you're looking for something totally bizarre. I think this would be a really cool movie. I I think it would I think it would be I think it would be need more like a mini series or something though. Well, and that's kind of where comparing this to like Fantastic Beasts, mm-hmm. it would be kind of cool for her to come out with almost like a little guide, mm-hmm. you know, of the beasts mm-hmm. and the different worlds and just like lay it out, you know, for someone like me. Because I I would probably go through that beforehand, before reading this, Mm -hmm. so that I kind of understand a little bit more of, like, okay, this is what the creature is. Yeah. Um, And being someone who does read fantasy, I looked at the back of the book, because I figured a lot of times they do that type of thing. So, I mean, it's not, you know, in a book of itself, you know, and I think you would probably like the pictures, too, is more so what you're getting at. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Whereas this, I mean, there are a couple, you know... um, black and white drawings but most of it is just the words and i mean who knows with this book I, it's she can go a lot of places mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. and it can be it could become very big and you know because that's kind of how harry potter happened is mm-hmm. it was just like one book and then now it's like they have the fantastic beast mm-hmm. and then they have the books just about the creatures and then they have books about the little things within the book so that someone you know, can go off of that. So I think that would be kind of fun, Mm -hmm. a fun thing for her to do. Um, And the thing with readers out there, the way, like, you know, you're like, how come Harry Potter became so popular? And to me, it was just a fluke. It was the right time, so on and so forth. But if you want, like, books like this to become super popular, you need to read them and write reviews and leave reviews, like, on Amazon and Goodreads and, you know, stuff like that, and recommend them to all your friends. And this... You know, maybe one day right. this would, you know, become a movie series right. or something. Right. So read, write reviews, <laughs> do all the good stuff. I enjoyed the different characters. One of my favorite, I think, was um, Poof is the name of it. And it was a Gruber. 
Um, they're round and fluffy with fur softer than a rabbit's, and they smell of laver- lavender and valerian. When you fall asleep, you squeeze it, and then it helps you sleep. <laughs> And as a, that was so funny. It was so cute. As a certified aromatherapist, and I'm studying herbalism. I'm like, oh, that's my little creature. I, I thought of one. like a little like my like palm chief Phil, who's just a little yeah. fluff ball. I thought of him like and just like squeezing, squeezing him. him. And so I love you, and I will call you George. So yeah, all the different characters were. I enjoyed them, you know, reading about them and learning about them. And the gist of it is, I guess we could talk a little bit about the <laughs> book. So the gist of it is there's a bounty on, um, oh God, my... Lena. Thank you. I'm like, woo. <laughs> there's a bounty on Lena's head and she goes to the assassin's home and yep, their town and village. And she's like, um, hey, I don't want this on my head. What can we do to... Not make, yeah, make it go away. Yep. So the leader, um, he knock. He goes, "I want four beasts, and then I will make sure none of my men kill you." So and Lena is considered a beast charmer, right? Beast charmer. Yes. Um. So she can essentially charm beasts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and communicate and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And isn't I don't know if it's illegal to be a beast charmer or if it's just illegal to be selling them. To selling your beasts. To selling them. And the reason why she's selling her beasts, she normally wouldn't, and she makes sure to find the best homes for them. Or there's some beasts that the way you use them, if she finds a stupid person who won't, like, think high... Or think high thoughts. Yeah, and won't take good care of them. Yeah. Um, One of her rules is that and if they mistreat them, she can kill them. That's yeah. like one of the charmer laws. So she tries to find the best people she can to and pair with the certain beasts. Yeah, and she tries not to sell that many. But since she is exiled from her kingdom because of a past lover who is a total douchebag, <laughs> um, this is what she has to do to survive. Right. So she goes to knock and says, "Let's get this bounty off my head." And he said, "I want four beasts." So that's when they begin their trip. Yep, looking for the beasts, and along the way, Nock realizes that he has feelings for her and doesn't want to have her killed, so he starts also having a side And I think to mention, he planned on... Killing her himself. Because the words... Even after getting the beast. So he was in a two-timer. The words that he used is, I will make sure none of my men kill you. He didn't say... I will will not kill you. Right. And that was right there. Um, That's another thing with fantasy books... The wording is very important when it comes to prophecies, when it comes to promises, so on and so forth. See, and I didn't catch that. Like, I didn't catch... I did as I, soon as I, I read it. I understood he was going to two-timer, <laughs> mm-hmm. and he was like, oh, you know, kind of like, she's stupid, she didn't catch on to what mm-hmm. I said. And I'm like, well, I didn't catch... Like, you know, I didn't catch on to what you mm-hmm. said until actually you just said it now. So I'm like, oh, yeah, he did say that. <laughs> he did say it exactly like that. And then he realizes that he doesn't want to kill her. So they have a side mission now to find out who actually put the bounty on her head. And they don't know because the person who did it was a woman and she had a mask. So they didn't know. The only clue that they had is when she went to charm her beast, like a light appears around their body or their hands or whatever. And she had a red light. So that was like the only clue that they had to go by. It plays farther along. And I think it's important to note that he, when I say that he reminds me of Christian Grey, mm-hmm. it's because he's very demanding and very standoffish and very like, this is what you must do. Mm-hmm. Like, you need to tell me before you do this. Mm-hmm. I kind of throughout a good portion of the book. Most of, it. Most of the book. Yeah. But he also doesn't want to have feelings for her because he's cursed. He's cursed. And basically... My understanding was the extent of the curse is anyone that he falls in love with or becomes close to. And I don't know if that was only intimately or if, like... I think just friendship, too. That's why, like, with Cost and stuff, he kept his distance, one okay. of his commanders. I wasn't sure if it was just lovers mm-hmm. or, you know, like, if he were to have a child or something, if mm-hmm. it goes on with that. But they end up dying. Mm-hmm. So that's part of the reason he's standoffish with Lena as mm-hmm. well. And they have, like, symptoms that slowly go along. Like, the first is bags under your eyes, then chap lips, then a cough with blood, and then something else, and then you die. And Lena, she's on this trip, so she's just thinking she's tired. So she starts getting the bags under her eyes, and she just puts some makeup on. You know, she gets some chap lips, but she puts some salve on it, and so on and so forth. And then it's later on, when she's coughing, that... After they 
after they have sex, <laughs> that Nock is like, you know, he is freaks that blood? out. Exactly. Yeah. And when he said, is that blood? I thought I, he, I, I thought, thought he meant from her vagina. Yeah. And I'm like, I thought like, what? Did she have her period? Exactly. I was like, what happened? Yeah. It, was it that rough? <laughs> um, yeah. That's exactly what I thought. Of. Yeah. Her whole thing that kind of, I guess, made me giggle a little bit was the fact that she was like, no, it's going to be fine because I don't feel that way about you. Because he was bas- he was honest about the fact that he was starting to have feelings mm-hmm. for her and that, hey, this can happen, so I don't want mm-hmm. I don't want this to happen. And she's like, no, it's just sex. Yeah, she's like, it's just sex. I'm not having those feelings. Liar! Liar! She's, you, she's <laughs> like, I'm not capable of feeling. Yeah. And I'm be- like... Because of her past relationship with the douchebag. Yeah, I'm like, what? I have yeah. a girlfriend. But, you know, you had to have a little drama and tension going on there. So, that... Yeah, I, and I think that's another reason why my husband doesn't enjoy the fantasy romance is because it's that whole will they, won't they. And then once they decide to, then something happens. And they're like, oh, no, I must stay away from that person. So, I can totally see that. And there is some... It's kind of like a chick... Like a romance. Yeah, like, like a chick flick type. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I don't read a lot of romance because it can get really obnoxious. Will they, won't they? I love you. I don't love you. You did something to piss me off. But I mean, that's just the romance genre. And if you enjoy that, that's awesome. Usually when I read it, it's because someone recommends it to me. Like um, Gina L. Maxwell was recommended to me. So I read some of her books, really enjoyed them. But, or when someone makes me read <laughs> The Mister. Um, the only other time I really read them is if I'm like, hey, I want to read some like erotica type books. Right. But usually then I won't even read for romance. I will go straight for the erotica. Right. So that's the difference. I don't, you know, I we can't really tell too much more because the ending is pretty close to after what we talked about. Yeah. Um, loved, loved the world building, loved <laughs> all the creatures. What, I, what do you got going? Well, I had to laugh because I didn't take notes on this because like I said, I listened to it. Usually if I'm reading it on my Kindle or something like that, I'll highlight notes and then take my notes after. Um, so I did not really take notes on this. But I see your notes where you mentioned, like, Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Which is, it, is it exactly. What you thought Yes, of. between Pokemon and, like, Fantastic Beasts. And so mm-hmm. that's, like, I, I was never a... My cousin was a big fan of Pokemon, and so I was around Pokemon in that sense. But I was never a big Pokemon fan. Mm-hmm. Um but still, having, like you said, the Fantastic Beast ties and whatever, it's like, oh, I really enjoy that. So mm-hmm. um, I felt like I went into this with a really open mind. And then I see you mention the Quidditch. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know how you exactly say that. Like, oh, get, gets a ball. Gets a ball, yeah. yeah. The, a um, game that they play. So that kind of mm-hmm. made me chuckle. And, I mean, every author takes pieces of things from other things that they read because that's just how you write. It's right. part of your life. Going back to the um, Pokemon, I would have never even made that connection because I never played Pokemon. I was not around people who played it. The only reason why I did is because the Poke- Detective Pokemon movie came out a couple months ago and my husband and I went to watch it. So that's like the only thing I know about Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about Pokemon. I just know like about Pikachu and like, you mm-hmm. know, all the little creatures. Yeah, and um, how they like come to their human and the one part that i enjoyed in the movie is i don't know which creature it was i have no idea but the one that's like in the field and it has like a helmet with horns on or or bones or something and like at first the human thinks the little creature is gonna like him and then the little creature like attacks him and i'm like oh that's so cute (laughs) so it made me think of that the pairings that lena did with the four assassins in regards to the beasts, I think the pairings were really good. I really liked that she did that. Mm-hmm. I liked that because when you start the book, Lena's intention was like, I'm going to go back. I'm going to get these four beasts. I'll be right back, mm-hmm. you know. And then that's when... Um, uh, no, you won't. Nah, he's like, no, <laughs> we'll come with you. And so I thought that was really cool how she chose... The beast for the each beast person. for each per yeah. Mm-hmm. And how she And for Oz, the beast was kind of chosen for him. Right. Which um was adorable too. That was just so cute how that was done. One of my final notes I just want to say, and I'm not I'm not gonna say more about this. Um so right now you'll be like, what is she talking about? But when you read the book and get to the end of it, gauge and cost. I think that's going to be super fun in the next book. <laughs> so, yes, I'm already looking forward to that. And I didn't look up to see when the next book's coming out. I don't um, even know. I thought I oh, wait, wait. saw The it. Frozen Prince coming February 25th of 2020. 
So I know I will definitely be reading that one yeah. and maybe we'll do another review. Yeah. I think it. that would be fun. Just a, a continuation. Yeah. Cause like I said, is if I just stopped at the first Harry Potter, I'd be like, it was good, it was fine. but yeah. eh. it's when the, the other books that really build this world, that's when it becomes like this magical awesome. thing. So not that this book wasn't good. I thought this book was, was great, excellent. but I'm excited to see more. Of, yeah, mm-hmm. more of the world, more of the beasts, yeah. learning, more, I, like, the other cute little beast she comes up with. And mm-hmm. that's the other thing, too, like, that with fantasy always boggles my mind is, how do you come up with this? <laughs> like, how do you name these creatures? Mm-hmm. How do you think of the names of the characters? How do you mm-hmm. think of this world? How do you think of how many worlds you want? How do you think of, you know, it, it just blows my mind. Mm-hmm. You know, I... And I've always told myself after reading Harry Potter, like, oh, I would love to sit down and write something like that because I love it so much. But there's so But I'm much. just like, just the thought of it gives me a headache. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I, where do you begin? Do you, did she have a dream? Yeah. And she was like, okay, you know, and ran with it. Mm-hmm. Or I, to me, it's just phenomenal, like, f- for any fantasy writer. Mm-hmm. How they can come up with yeah. that. There's probably, like, a lot, lot of whiteboards and post-it notes yeah. and, you know, books written or, like, notebooks with notes taken. Maxim, if you want to let us know your writing style, that would be great. Or Yes, we um, would love to know more. We would. Yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Be reading the next one. Highly recommend. Yeah, I thought it was a really good good fantasy and the romance I thought was really good too. And there wasn't like a lot of romance. No, know? it wasn't like forceful. No. Like, you know. We need to wh- have another sex scene here. Yeah. No. When we read the mister natural. to me, it felt kind of forced <laughs> and, <laughs> and like, it wasn't a natural scenario to me. And mm-hmm. it, it, I'm not even going to go off cause I will just go off. So just watch but the, the, our other podcast yeah, talking listen about to it. it. Yeah. But with this, it was a very, it was more fantasy, and then the sex was just kind of a natural... Progression of the pro- story. Yeah, progression of two people, mm-hmm. you know, on this mm-hmm. journey. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I liked it, and I was really surprised. And I'm glad you did. I didn't... Cause it's, not that I, it's not that I didn't think I wouldn't like it. It's just that I thought that... I've, I haven't read any of the Lord of the Rings or seen any of the movie. Don't. Do not. And I am sorry for you people out there who love it, but for the love of God. Like, an He's just walking the entire movie, and then he drops the ring. (laughs) And what's the other one that the TV show? There's so many TV shows. Where are you going with this? Um, (laughs) The super popular one right now. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, okay. You know, I don't watch that kind of stuff, like medieval type Mm -hmm. fantasy, that kind of stuff. I don't watch it a lot. Um, And... The few times that I've like tried to, it didn't amuse you. It no. Yeah, and if you started with Lord of the Rings, I no. well, and I think when I wa- I think I've seen one Lord of the Rings movie, and I think it was like the third one, oh. so that was like a bad thing Start. to do. <laughs> you just with but one. to me, it's just like it was kind of overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And when I like looked at the book, because it was like, oh, I if I maybe I would enjoy it, and mm-hmm. I look at the book and I all the characters and all the different worlds. And the other thing that kind of makes me nervous is when there's a map. Oh, this when one has a map. I know. So that's why, I, like, I see that and I'm like, oh, shit. Like, there's, there's not too many and places. It's, and it's not that I, it doesn't turn me off because of the map. It turns me off because it's like, am I going to be able to keep track of, of all like, places. of all the places and all the mm-hmm. things and this and that. So when I saw the map, I'm like, oh, fuck. But the way she did Him. it, you could. It was yeah. easy to keep yes. track of. So this was a very good fantasy book if you're someone like me who's kind of a fantasy virgin <laughs> and, like, just getting into it. And mm-hmm. that's kind of funny because it's a fantasy romance. It is. Fantasy so, virgin with a fantasy romance. Yes. Yeah, so I really enjoyed it. I will be reading the second one, and I will probably actually be physically reading mm-hmm. the book as well mm-hmm. since I listened to it. Cool. Um, Sounds good. So... Well, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share with all your friends. Um, Our socials are down below as well as our merchandise store. Uh, Like I said, I'll put some of my notes down below too, just with things that I saw kind of coming. Read them if you want. Don't read them. Whatever. Anything else? Nope. I would probably give this... I think I would give this a 5 out of 5. Yeah? You sound sound not sure. Well... (laughs) 
It, it's hard to say because, like, I feel like the next book I would give a five out of five. Oh, so it's just starting this one. So, so yeah. you don't want to, like, give her too much too fast. Yeah, too because fast. I'm afraid, like, the next one's going to be even better. Because, again, like, with the Harry Potter. Five five. Yeah, with Harry Potter, I would give the first book, knowing what I know now. Like a three. Like a three, yeah. <laughs> and not that it's bad or anything, mm-hmm. but it was just kind of compared to the whole series. It's yeah. like, eh. yeah. And so this, right now, I really enjoy it, and I would probably give it a four or five, but that's kind of dependent on the next book. So. Well, I will give it a strong five out of five, <laughs> and that's from someone who reads a lot of fantasy and fantasy romance. So um, do with that what you will. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hmm.